won't come again. So we have a problem to evaluate on race use of a function at if the points one, two, three, and infinity. And then to show that if we add all these residues at these specified points, the sum is zero. So as usual, the first thing is to find the poles of the function f of z. And that is obtained by equating the denominator to zero. So solution. First, we obtain the poles. by equating the denominator to zero and solving the resulting equation. So IE, the denominator in this case is Z minus one z minus two, z minus three equals to zero, uh, which means z equals to one, z equals to two, and z equals to three are simple poles. Simple because the powers of each of these linear terms is one. for the given function f of z. Now, immediately you get the poles, you now start evaluating the residues at each of the points. So residue at z equals to one is given by limit as z approaches one of z minus one times the function f of z this by definition so this will give us limit as z approaches one z minus one you multiply by so f of z is given by z squared divided by z minus one, z minus two, z minus three. And in this product, you clearly see that this term, this term cancels out. So we get our answer as limit as z approaches one of z squared over z minus two, z minus three. Uh, this limit can be evaluated by just substitution. So this would be one squared, one minus two, one minus three, which would be one over negative one times negative two, and this will give us a half. So that's the residue at the first pole, z equals to one. Next, we evaluate the residue of f of z at z equals to two, by definition, it will be given by limit as z approaches to z minus two times the function f of z. So which tells us that this value will be limit as z approaches to z minus two times f of z is z squared divided by z minus one, z minus two, 
z minus three. And in this product, it should be clear that this bracket and this bracket cancels out. So we remain with limit z approaches to z squared z minus one and then z minus three. This limit can also be solved by just direct substitution. So we get two squared over two minus one, two minus three, which will be four over one times minus one. So that will give us minus four. That's the second value of the residue. And then residue at z equals to three, So residue of f of z at the third pole z equals to three will be given by limit z approaches three z minus three multiply by f of z. This will be limit as z approaches three z minus three, you multiply by z squared, z minus one, z minus two, z minus three. And in that product, this bracket and this bracket cancels out. So we'll have limit z approaches three, z squared z minus one z minus two so this will be by direct substitution three squared three minus one three minus two which will be nine over two times one so that will give us nine over two. And then residue at infinity, we, we had also to calculate residue of the function at infinity. So this by definition will be given by limit as z approaches infinity. Now here you have to include a negative sign. So negative z times f of z. Be careful to remember this negative sign. So this will be limit as z approaches infinity, negative z times z squared divided by z minus one z minus two, z minus three. And then in this product, we can write it as, so factor out the negative sign. So we can say negative and then limit z approaches infinity of now z cubed, this z times z squared, z minus one, z minus two, z minus three. Now we want to be smart in solving this limit. So this is how we are going to work it out. You see uh, z cubed is the same as z times z times z. So I can write this one as negative limit, z approaches infinity. So I can, let me write this one as z cubed. And then each of these terms, so it's like I want to multiply this uh, function by one, but that one I write it as one over z cubed and then over one over 
z cubed. So one over z, I'll multiply by this first bracket. So I get one minus one over z. The second, so remember what I'm doing, one over z cubed is the same as one over z times one over z times one over z. So one over z, I multiply by this first bracket, another one over z by this second bracket, another one over z by this third bracket. And then when you multiply one over z by z cubed, actually, okay, so let me just put here over z cubed. And then multiply this by one over z, I get one minus two over z. This I get one minus three over z. Remember when you simplify this one, you still get back this original function. So this will be negative limit z approaches infinity. So numerator now will be one. So one minus one over z, one minus two over z, one minus three over z. Now from properties of limits in calculus, we know that limit of product of functions is the same as the product of limits of those functions. So, and limit of quotient is the same as limit of the numerator or limit of the denominator. So I can have this one as negative into, so limit as z approaches infinity of one over limit as z approaches infinity of all this denominator so this is just applying the properties of limits so properties of a quotient do the same as limit of the numerator the limit of the denominator so which will be negative now limit of constant as z approaches infinity remains to be that constant so i'll have one and here limit of products is the same as product of the limits of each of the function so this is the same as limit as z approaches infinity of one minus one over z times limit as z approaches infinity one minus two over z times limit as z approaches infinity of one minus three over z. And just as we have seen in the previous case, so limit of one is one and limit of one over z as z approaches infinity is zero. So this is same as negative one over so this part I'll get one times this part two over z as z approaches infinity is also zero. So one minus zero is one. This will be one limit as z approaches infinity of three over z is the same as one. That is zero then one minus zero is one. So this will give us negative one. So adding all the residues, so sum of all residues is equals, the first one we go to the answers are half, second one we go to the answers minus four, the next one we go to an answer as nine over two, and the last one we have got in as negative one. So you see a half plus nine over two is the same as 10 over two, and then minus four minus one. 10 over two is five, so five minus four minus one is zero. So what we were to prove that the sum of all the residues in this given problem is true, that the answer is zero for the sum. So that's how we solve that problem. Thank you.